Hello everybody and welcome back to the Medverse channel and as promised in our last video we will be getting back to all of our tips videos here at the Medverse channel and we're going to start off with a bang and do an ultimate guide to step two. And we have the perfect sponsor for this video and that is Online MedEd. Stay tuned to hear more. I'm going to be releasing a guide on how to approach step one now that it's passed on pass and how you approach medical school now that it's passed on pass because that decision changes everything for medical students and we're going to get into that soon. But in this video, I'm going to give you guys a lowdown on everything for step two because that is going to be the most important exam now for you guys. I'm telling you right now, personally, after talking to program directors and other individuals on the panel, step two is going to be very important. But not to worry, Medros has your back. I've gotten so many messages from individuals that use my plan for step one and scoring in the 250s to even 260s. I'm super happy to get those messages. Let's do the same for step two. Step two really lives up to the step name. Once you get step one, step two really is the next step. So this time around, they're really gonna focus on things like what is the best imaging? What is the best lab? What is the best next step to take? And that is key, that you might even know what happens along the line there, but also you have to take into account when is it the best time to do that next step. So if you know that we should be getting this X lab work, well, is it the next best step? Is it the next best next step? Why this gets so frustrating is what you think is the best step and what I think is the next best step might be even the next logical best step, but it is not the right answer compared to a physician that's been practicing all their life and has looked at the data and the data has shown that something else was the next best step, which is just so frustrating when that happens. So what are the golden resources this time? Well, like in any exam, there's the knowledge, the question bank, and the reps. More than ever for this exam, you're gonna wanna use the patented Medrose spiderweb theory. Make sure if you guys haven't seen it to go check out that video. Why it's so important for this particular exam is because on step two, a lot of the reasoning you have to go through isn't following that stepwise progression of reasoning. The answers to many questions on step two are not concept driven. Typically you'll get a question and you will just have to know that piece of knowledge. What is that best imaging? What is that best medication proved by research to be the next best step? So the key with an exam like this is you want to get through the material as soon as possible. You will soon find that step two material is not written in paragraph form. It's more guidelines, tables, guidelines, guidelines, guidelines. When you're going through these texts, you're gonna find just tables of when is the next step to give this vaccine or what are the hypertension guidelines or what is the next imaging to get when they have a PE and they're just written in these tables. Nobody can sit there and read that. That's just lame. You have to get to questions to get that information stored in your head for long term. So what if you're asking yourself, I don't have a good step one foundation. What do I do then? And that entails adding one more resource to your knowledge base section and that is online med ed this resource is one of the best resources to go ahead and brush up on all your clinical knowledge it works for residents it works for pretty much every level of medicine it's just a really concise set of videos that if you are lacking on your foundation get over online med ed and get it a huge plus is that online med ed videos are completely free you can get on their website and start learning everything for step two right now in addition to this they have a premium subscription which you can get that gets you notes illustrations flashcards kaplan's question bank and a bunch of other study tools and a key thing that makes a difference when we're looking at resources is that who is making them? Online MedEd is built by medical students for medical students. They built Online MedEd as a high yield resource bank to teach med students what they need to know, not what some random person wants to teach you. I personally went to online meta videos every time I was confused with a concept. Even now during residency, I go back to some of their videos to just solidify the concepts. They've done a great job at putting together a compilation of videos that covers such a wide range of topics. It's a must have resource. Get over to the UL's questions and dive right into it and use that spider web theory to link yourself right back to the text, to the guidelines and get that information stored in there. I really just had to go through UL once look at my marked and incorrects and I was done with the question bank part. I was done with looking back at my materials and spider webbing through it and I was off to take my test. Repeating, repeating, repeating though is the key for this exam. That's the only way you get these guidelines burned into your brain. And of course, there's always people that are going to want to go beyond to go even further beyond. And the only way to do that typically is to do questions on questions on questions and get yourself some more question banks. Many times the fact that they're gonna be questioning you on is just some doctor that has experience and feels like you should know it and felt like they were gonna write it onto the test that day and you, my friend, got screwed. 
unless you saw the question somewhere. And the honest truth for these kind of exams is really to keep things simple. You want as less resources in front of you as possible. I know people that try to tackle every resource and they're doing different resources every day. Get that resource in front of you, grind it out, know it inside and out. And if you have time, you can add on additional resources. But if you know that resource inside and out, if you know that master book and you know you wrote questions inside and out, you're already sitting at a 250, 260. I'd say on average, somebody with a good step one foundation, I'll give yourself about a month to study for step two. If you're feeling a little queasy on your step one material and you're coming off not as strong, give yourself time to do online med ed and go through the knowledge and go through the resources and build that foundation up again. You don't need that big of a foundation as you had for step one. We still want to have a, a little catching up to do there before you go into step two comfortably. But that's it guys. I know you guys are going to kill it on step two. I want to hear your scores as well. Just like you guys have been messaging me on how you did on step one. I would love to hear how you do on step two. Make sure you guys subscribe to the Medbo channel. We are going to be doing deep dives back on the study content. I definitely have so many different things planned from productivity to morning routines, actual morning routines, on my parodies of morning routines, going over MCAT, step one, step two. We have big projects in the works. So make sure you guys subscribe. We're going to be giving you all the best tips so you can be the best students that you guys can be graduate students, workers, whatever the heck you're working on. Make sure you guys subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one.